This is code.org, CS Discoveries or Computer Science Discoveries. I'm on Unit 2, which is Web Development, Lesson 10, Styling Text with CSS. Let's see what we have here. Style Sheets. Web developers initially intentionally separated content and style to make their code easier to maintain. HTML is the language used to structure the content of a web page. CSS is the language used is the language that adds style to that web page. Yes, HTML can add a bit of style, but there's not a real point of using that type of HTML code. We're not actually even going to learn it because CSS is so much more versatile and has so much more it can do to our content of our page. So. Words and images, that's the content, that's HTML. HTML is the structure, this is awesome. CSS is the, well, it's the style. And obviously the skeleton is styling. All right, content structure. Often the relationship between the content on your page, the way H, the HTML organizes the content and the way CSS displays the content is referred to as the content structure style. Developers use HTML to organize the different types of content on the page, indicating how it should be structured. If you don't use CSS to style that content, then the web browser will apply default styles based on the web the HTML has structured it. Based on the way the HTML, yep, the default way, yep. As you learn CSS style rules, you'll have more control over the style to the different type, to styles, over the style applied to different types of content on your page. Adding a style sheet. One. Oh, okay. To add a CSS style rules to an HTML page, you need to create a style sheet document. And I guess that's by clicking there. Two. This is a style sheet. <laughs> yep. And just like c.html, well, .css is the CSS sheet. And this is the tricky part. Link to your style sheet. The link goes inside the head tag, head, head, and looks like this. So this is just a new um, tag. In this tag, you have a less than sign, link, space, rel, equals, and then in quotes, style sheet. And that's always just going to be style sheet because that's what CSS is. Then you do space and do a herf tag equals, and this style.css if you name your, your CSS file hello.css, it must be exactly, exactly, exactly whatever you named that CSS file. So style.css, and that goes in quotes. And then for this, and, and, and then it ends, then a greater than sign. Let's see what they're saying now. CSS rule set. CSS rule set consists of two main parts, the selector and the rules. The selector can be any part of the web page you want to style. One way you can identify parts of a web page is using the names of the element type. Selecting an element type will make all elements and types and that type have a, the given style. The selector name for HTML element types is the name of the tag with the brackets removed. In the below example, the selector is h1 and it will style all h1 elements with the rules inside the curly brackets. Yep, right here. And we've seen that before. So the H1, we, this is what we've seen already. Any HTML tag on your web page, all of that text is going to be colored blue by this CSS rule. Rules. The rules describe how the elements identified by the selector should change. Each rule consists of a property name and a value, separated by a colon. The property names the property name describes what the rule is about, such as the color or the size, and the value how the property should change. For example, the rule step below will make all the H1 headers on the page have blue text that is underlined. Cool. The punctuation is the rule set. The punctuation in the rule set is very important because that's the, that's the way the computers know where each rule starts and stops. Yes. You absolutely have to have this colon and this semicolon. Otherwise, it gets confused. Computers can only do what the humans tell them to do. Excellent. 